thank you so much vivi uh, for dialing in from singapore just to um, to set a little context for our listeners and whoever is joining this live this is our shopmatic's first live session um under doers and dreamers banner that we have been creating for quite some time and for years now and uh, we have vivi from fun with arts joining us from singapore uh and uh, we are going to go yes a big hello because uh, and we also see a pineapple hello. next to her that is just her ode for chinese new year for whatever 5 uh, 7 days is left for chinese new year mm yes <laughs> okay happy so new year everybody yes a big happy chinese new year to everybody and um, so without uh, any further ado uh, a quick introduction from uh, for vivi i'll probably say just half a sentence for her and vivi then we will all hear from you because we are very excited to hear that how does food miniature turn into a business and how you did it successfully for last 12 years so uh, vivi has um, started her online journey in 2018 with shopmatic but many years before that she has been uh, creating a uh, lot of crafts and um, uh, playbooks for corporates and um, for uh, for even consumers to come and have these workshops with her so vivi would you all, would you just like to give a small introduction for for yourself for our uh, listeners who are coming in Hello everybody. My name is Vivi. So I've been teaching for 12 to 13 years. Um my online business has been on box about uh 10 years ago. So how do I come about this? Because um I was actually a art instructor for school. I joined my classmate in his uh, teaching business. So what happened was um I was very happy I found my passion in teaching. Mm, after a long journey of about 7 years teaching in ceramics I start to uh, like a uh, look around for other clay as well so I google and I um, seen a lot of uh, things that pop up when I click the word clay so clay to me in my world is uh, using the 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 um you know those type that you need to fire for like uh, many many years then uh, i get excited when i see this cute little stuff that is made from clay you my, my it was um very very cute and uh, i when i look at all those colors that can be done using this uh tiny little clay um i just caught my eye so i become so obsessed i keep googling for other clay like a uh, clay food so this oh. clay food i'm uh, very very um like kind of excited how can a uh, clay uh have so much texture and how can it like uh, look like a uh, food so much so so it's been uh, all my years i have been uh, using clay to make pots plates and cups it has been very dull because uh, it's very difficult to <laughs> control and mm. most of the time it's just a uh, brushed on or you just uh, dip in so it's quite um out of control but using yeah. oven baked clay and uh, resin clay that i come to today i find that i can control it easier i can paint it wherever i want i can uh, add texture to it and i can highlight and i can create it like a uh, still life like uh, if i see an orange i can make an orange out of clay i can even use to uh, after i create from clay i can wear them as earrings and jewelry and i can actually yeah. display it and give it to my friends Yeah we saw that. Mm. So uh just a curious question what's the difference between oven baked clay and resin clay if you can just uh explain it for our listeners here. Okay. So oven baked clay is actually oil based so you will need to bake it in an oven 
but it's still manager for uh, oh. manageable for me because I do not need to buy a uh, industrial type kiln. I don't need to fire it at a, a high with high power. I can use a normal oven that you actually use it at home. It just bake at one hundred and one hundred and ten degrees Celsius. So um, about uh, this resin clay, it's actually made a high content of uh, PVC and it is uh, water based. So I will just leave it in the air and dry like one or two days. And it's very convenient for me to use it in my workshop. Got it. So you thought all of these things right in 2010 when I don't think any one of us knew what uh, miniature food actually is. Yeah, right. So I actually started in about 2010 when I Googled there isn't much in our country. I've only seen a local that actually made the tree tarts, fruit tarts using clay. So these tree tarts are made like um, not, not maybe, I don't, it's the, the texture is there. You can uh, see that you are using air dry, she's using air dry clay. Um, but you can't see really see the depth there. So I keep uh, learning from the internet, and uh, I find that uh, the when I just started, the color is not uh, so much easier for me to control. I couldn't get uh, what I want, so I've uh, start to look through books, research, and uh, I've gone to the library every day to check for new books and I've also found a polymer clay book um, from the library during that time. Yeah, so they are using oven baked clay. So I read through and I learn and I experiment on my own and I cannot stop buying clay from then on. And I bought many different types of brands. Yes, then I stock up quite a lot and I just keep on trying and trying and trying. For about close to 10 years, I finally come to a conclusion that it's not a matter of the brand or the brand more or less is the same. It's about um, it's about your skill. Mm, so it's right. about what you understand about the colors, how you apply them, how you mix them, how you get the colors, then how you mold them. And it is through a lot of time and observation. Got it. Got it. It's just like so really a piece of uh, steel. Sorry. Art. Sorry. No, no. I, I saw. Um, sorry. Please finish. Oh, I say. Um, it's like a drawing a piece of steel art. Steel life. Oh wow, that's really nice. We just got a comment from somebody saying that you are a clay printer. Then I think that's a new term for a dictionary of entrepreneurs, but. Uh, uh, with this struggle of actually finding the clay and you know seeing what really works when did you really realize that this could be a business for you or this could be like like you could actually start your entrepreneur journey with it when did that happen oh it's actually a big struggle for me because um sure you know uh, adventure and venture needs a lot of uh, money you need a lot of investment when I Hashtag mentioned about buying Adventure about and clay. venture needs a lot of money Very good mm. So you need a lot of money You need to have money to buy clay Because they are all shipping from overseas I buy them from mm. Japan And I started off buying from Etsy as well So they sell a lot of handmade materials I learned a lot from there And uh, I see what other artists selling And I buy books Craft books clay craft books and I start my learning journey from books most of my techniques are from books so um, I also learn through the hard way I experience it um, oh how expensive is it uh, okay a book cost me about uh, 35 USD plus $10 of shipping fee so oh, the clay wow. itself cost me about $30 USD so I will buy one and I will try based on the book. So the book will recommend this brand, then I will try that brand. So every time I want to learn new techniques, I will always try to get new books. So every, every new book uh, will give me uh, new inspiration. But the thing is, 
the book will always recommend their brand of clay. So um, I've tried a lot of brand. So after 10 years of uh, trying out and throwing a lot of clay, finally I settled down on uh, one brand. That is this. Resin clay. What is that brand? Can you so highlight it for uh, us? It's uh, Moderna. Okay, it has nothing related to the, the name of the vaccine. It is, this clay has been around for close to 10 years. So, oh, good. Yeah, like, we probably have to uh, check it out uh, for our India audience to see whether it's available in India or not. But Modena clay is the clay that Vivi uses. Got it. Yeah, so you can actually purchase from my, from my website as well at funwithart.com. You can actually uh, I, sure. I do ship. Uh, worldwide mm. so um, I also sell a lot of uh, craft kits and uh, there will be instructions as well I have virtual uh, craft so you can actually purchase online and I will be going on a live session with you and I do have virtual lessons and also um, you can watch my YouTube channels so yeah, so I think that's the most exciting thing about Fun With Arts is that Fun With Arts went uh, online with Shopmatic in 2018 and that's when you started taking online classes and workshop from the website and uh, you have uh, been using the online workshop since then, right? So how has that journey been? Especially in last two years when most of us are stuck at home due to pandemic and we have work from home. So how did you segue your way with uh, your workshops for um, schools uh, or individuals and also for the corporate one that you host? Oh yes, during the pandemic, um, it was uh, we were actually hit very hard because um, we are we are actually not able to open for classes, and we are not able to go out um, to like uh, our corporate classes. All the classes are closed. So what happened was I was actually asked to convert the lessons into virtual. So I start to yeah. stay in. Okay, so I plan. And I designed classes. I started with three basic classes that I can actually plan and pack my materials that Got is it. feasible to send over. Um, because these are air dry, so um, there is some limit to the to the days. Like uh, we we only have like a five days, so that the clay will not harden and uh, they will be able to solve this. So we have a lot of troubleshoot and I am very glad and appreciative that um, I have a help from a lot of um, from my family and the support of my regulars so the, my regular customer will actually purchase uh, the virtual classes for me because I think they have uh, they are quite bored so so they trusted me to go online with them. So we have weekly book, uh, booking and um, I think I learned from there. Yeah, I know. And we are so learned, fortunate yeah, that I we in this from the live session. Lesson. Yeah, and we are so fortunate that in this live session, we will actually get to see you doing a live demo of uh, one of your products. So tell us what demo are you going to show us today? A little bit about it. Sure. Okay, I'm going to make a pineapple tart using clay. Okay, this pineapple tart always go uh, viral when people are talking about uh, pineapple tarts because this is the one of the most important thing in our Chinese New Year celebration. Sure. Because sweet treats is a must <laughs> to make our daily life sweet for Chinese. So when when our our guests come, we will always uh, treat them for the the, the, the treat, sweet treats. Yeah, so that's the first thing you have uh, before your uh, reunion dinner, right? And I think the pineapple next to you is totally giving away the hint that you're going to make the demo for. Yeah. So yeah. why do we have the uh, pineapple. pineapple tart? Because, yes, because of the pineapple in uh, Chinese, our dialect, Hokkien, is uh, online. Online that means um, very good luck. So it's a must-have fruit that it should not it should stay untouchable throughout the 15 days. 
Oh, it's good for so it's a good us. luck for uh, our shop magic doers and rumors live session as well. So we are so happy to kick start it with you. So, uh, can you tell us what yes, are the raw I'm materials? Sure. Uh, what are the raw materials are you using for this pineapple tart miniature that we'll be creating? So, I'm using uh, this uh, air dry clay, uh, air dry resin clay. So when it dries, what's so good about this bread is can you show a little dries, bit closer to the dries. camera, Vivi, so that our uh, viewers shows, can see it? Okay, this look like that. So yeah. This clay, what's so good about this clay is because this clay is uh, it dries waterproof. It has a small little text over here. And it says that it dries waterproof. Yeah. Okay, you can check out my website and you will be able to see it written clearly in English. It says that it is waterproof. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use one is to one translucent and white clay and add on a yellow ochre clay to make it look like a cookie dough. So it's going to look like this, a cookie dough. Yeah. It's just to mimic the colour of uh, the, the unbaked cookie dough. So how do I do it? I use a ball of white clay because it is to make it not so opaque. So I make a round ball. What you can do is you can use the Baby, can you, uh, clay can you color chart. Sorry Vivi, can you just turn the camera a little bit towards your desk? Yeah, perfect. I think a little bit more so that we can see what you're doing. Yes. And you probably have to lift it up a little bit towards the camera so that we can just see it clearly. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Yeah. So I have a ball of white clay and a ball of translucent clay because pineapple tarts and cookies colors are not translucent, not transparent. It must have a balance of both white and translucent and I will add on a tint of um, yellow ochre I mix them together Oh, to get the color, is it? Yes, three of them together. Then this will look like your cookie dough, the color, just to make it look like a cookie dough, the unbaked cookie dough. And we are going to paint and highlight it with, um, you can use acrylic paint or oil paint. So I'm going to get a ball of clay. I will try to. Okay, I rolled it first. Yeah. I rolled it round, and I pressed it gently. I will need to use the, um, sandpaper. Yeah. I I prefer to use the rough sandpaper so that I can texture my cookie, my clay cookie, well and rough, the clay can be seen rough, so you can see a lot of dots, can you see a lot of dots on it? Yeah. If you are a beginner and you don't have a lot of clay tools, you can just kickstart with some toothpick. They make great tools as well. Just, I will make some lines, a curvy lines around the base. How do you make these curvy lines? Are you using a tooth, toothpick? Is that a toothpick that you're using? Yes, I use the pointy part of the toothpick. Got it. Yes, we can see. Yeah. Yep. 
Nah, it's very intricate. I'm going to put a little bit of a glue. You can use any air dry, uh, any uh, white glue. Uh, Got I it. This from Daiso. You can use any brand because uh, yeah. white glue dries clear, so that you don't see any yellow stain on your clay. And That's I get a point, ball actually. of. Uh, sorry. That's a very good point to uh, talk about white glue rather than any other glue because of the marks that it leaves behind, right? You're right, right. And they are able to attach the clay well. Okay, I roll a ball of uh, orange clay and I press it. So I get another ball of the cookie clay. So, I rolled it into a thin strip to make the design on top. So, I roll it thin using one finger because um, yeah. I can control the thickness of the strip. Easier using one finger. Okay, roll it thin because when you press, when the clay is pressed down, you can see that it gets fatter. So yeah. if it gets too fat, then when you stick on, what's going to happen is going to cover the whole entire pineapple, the pineapple filling. Right. Then I press and I flatten more. I squeeze a bit of glue on my clay board. I use the toothpick to apply glue where I want to attach my clay strips. Oh wow. This is very cool. So I put on then I go around it. So only oh. until I reach the end, then I cut it off. So that it can be just nice. Beautiful. Okay, I attach the end really properly. Yeah, yeah. Oops, it's too small to be held. So I apply glue again. Excessive glue is no good because I'm going to paint on it and so the glue is going to stain all over my sponge. So after I apply glue and I make sure that the clay is um, stick properly, I will use my finger to clean off the excess glue. Okay, I paste the strip. This is the opposite side. Yeah. So that it has a cross section. Yeah, it has a cross section. Got it. Okay, it's a little bit too short. So I'm going to make again. Going to make exactly the same size, uh, the strip size. Yeah. And I press. I'll just apply glue on it. Oh, it stick on my hand. Okay, I need to reattach. So this is really tricky, Finally. right? To paste it on the glue. Yeah. Wow. So it's not as easy. Yeah, as it's not as easy do. as it looks. Okay, wow, yay. Our family. Wow, that looks really good. Give us a yeah, yeah, zoom focus. 
Wow, it looks beautiful. So you see a lot of glue around that. Yeah, so we are but it's not going to leave any stain, right? Uh, I'm going to paint it, but first I want to clean off the excess glue. Okay, you have to clean off very gently, and I pressed it down while I'm cleaning it, so that all the parts are attached firmly and I don't want any part of it to come off when I am painting it. Okay, this is going to look um, uh, like a very yummy pineapple tart. So, yes, you can use it does look like acrylic a paint at home. So, uh, Vivi, while uh, you do the finishing touches of this, would you like to um, tell our uh, viewers who are here about your journey with Shopmatic and also giving them a few expert tips of how they can turn their passion into their business and how they can start with their entrepreneurship? Oh, if you want to start, you have to start immediately. <laughs> you have to work very hard. True. Um, first of all, you need to have a few good product photos. You need to think about um, what to sell. Of course, you have your product. I think you just need to have a few good pieces to start off. And you need to start immediately. You cannot keep thinking that um, I will work on the next week because it's very hard to happen. So, set off some time. I... Have, I, I have a teaching classes every day. So what happened is um, after my classes, I will take photo of my work. Some classes are customized. So even though they are not my regular classes, I also take photo of my work and I upload them onto my website. So every week I will have only two products, but I do it every week. So every weekend, wow. I will have at least two new products. Mm. So after about four or five years, I have a hundred over products. So um, to start off with, when you want to do, you want to do it. We ha you don't have to have a lot at the moment. You just have to start off with two, three pieces, and you do it on a regular basis. Mm. Although it's very tiring from after That's work, a really good point That but, not to wait for it And start your entrepreneurship journey With just few products And you will keep growing on it Right We. Yes right So I think um, After after four or five years On the website I My, my products grow And um, more people will come Then um, I think I um, think the, the business will start rolling because I feel that if, if you don't show it if you don't show it you don't upload it nobody know and nobody will get to see it so I think um, uploading it is very important and uh, get a good camera get a um, set up your studio I think uh, do not tear uh, you don't have to set up you don't have to bring tear, tear down then um I think it's easier for you to work, work with and um, using this method you will not procrastinate and you will not wait until tomorrow because Correct. tomorrow never comes yes totally that's what we will uh, we'll tell our entrepreneurs to move ahead with and uh, setting up your website uh, tell us about like quickly if you can just tell us about you setting up your website with um, Shopmatic, how was that as an experience? Because you already had few pictures. So did you build on it over and over again or you already had everything ready with you before you went online? No, I built on it. So I have some uh, actual fact when I started, I started everything all over again. It's like a, it's like a, a brand new look. I came from somewhere. I had a X, X web store. Um, but the old web store wasn't uh, e-commerce so it has to be two platforms and combined together so uh, when I started with Shopmatic it's uh, everything into one I can uh, check out 
and I can have a lot of uh, beautiful photos uh, on the website. So it's all in one, and I can get instant uh, purchase. I think uh, selling is important, but um, yeah. to be convincing is also important. Mm. That's right. That's right. So, do we have our pineapple tart ready for the afternoon and evening for Singapore? Pineapple tart. Wow, beautiful! And then, how do you use it in products, uh, Vivi? Can you show us how does it go to become the products that you sell? Okay. You can use a uh, super glue. Yeah. Apply it on the metal stud. Stick it onto the the backing of the clay. Then wet yep. it as earrings. Or what I wow. do is I use an eye pin, and I use glue to attach into my clay. My this clay is waterproof, so you can use them as accessories, key ring. Back charm. Wow, is that a is that an ice even, cream sundae and a keychain? Maybe yes. can you bring that back on the frame, please? So this is wow, that is beautiful. So you can make anything you like using this clay. You can yeah. Make a you can make a music <laughs> instrument. You can make an orange. Not only food, you can make a teddy bear. You can make your favorite cartoon character. You can make Disney. Um, then, and you can uh, also you can, make jewelry uh, out your of favorite it. Favorite food. Yes, wow. and you can wear them as earrings. So I have this my is brilliant cute teapot and a cake. So I teach this every day. Are you day. serious? Did you, you just make that? Classes. Wow! Is that a pastry yes. on a dish? Yes, it's so, a pastry. It's a cake. So beautiful. It looks so real. Do I make That's you just hungry? Um, so this is Chinese tradition. <laughs> uh, kue. We call it a long life cake. So everybody must have. And you eat this, you will, you will be long life. <laughs> That's really nice. That's really nice. So I think we have a lot of uh, people coming in, and yeah, somebody says that they have really not heard about such products, and it's really possible. It's really good to see that you actually thought about it. What twelve years ago to make a product like this and sell it and make a business out of it? Like, really, kudos to you. Mm. And uh, it's so wonderful. We just have uh, probably one or two questions which you have already answered, saying that how did you turn your passion for craft into a business? Just probably one line for uh, somebody who left this question. Oh, uh, passion! Turning passion into business is don't come easy. Um, I have received an advice before. Is just one line. Do not give up. And you have to work your way to achieve it. Correct. To make it work. Hundred percent. True that. Mm. And uh, so probably with this with this uh, uh, working hard journey, I can. Uh, it will be. This will be able to last me. To work until the day I cannot see. Definitely, and being online and being present online. I mean, you can be anywhere in this world, and still your products can sell and your workshops can be signed in. We are so happy to have mm. you as a first session, and uh, we will uh, follow up with this session, save this session on our page so that people can check. The process that you went through for a very small product, but that's how you do for all your products, and they can book your session from anywhere, uh, sitting on any part of the world. So that's true, right? Yes, yes. I thank you so much, Vivi, for having us. And you. sorry, thank I you. cut you. Do visit my website. It's okay. Yes. So do we should all to visit the uh, Vivi website. And I'm sure you will have more workshops coming your way from all of us who have been a part of this live session. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy Chinese New Year. Bye.